Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Celtic Chance for a Top video. It's been a couple of weeks since, or even, I don't know, a week or something since we've done the last video. It's not been, there's been rumours, but it hasn't been the ones where you think it's going to happen. But today's video is potentially going to happen, and it looks like, as from the title, Celtic are looking, reportedly set to beat the likes of Newcastle, Roma, and Crystal Palace to sign of Thomas Henley for £7 million. Um, the French were scored 21 times in Belgium last season for uh, Leuven and and has three from th three in the new campaign. Um, just from that, you know, I've got to give him. I've got to give him the one word. Unit. It's still like I get excited about rumours, but if we get him, I'll be happy over the world from if we get him because he looks a, a player. Um, but he looks Thomas Henry looks to be Odson Edwards replacement as he's set to leave the club very soon. Uh, as I said, the French have scored 21 goals last season. It's currently three goals and three um, in this season in Belgium. This would be an unreal signing. One of the, um, to be honest with you, because, you know, one of the, one to be very excited about, it would be boost this team massively, giving us a brand new straight option completely. I don't know how the team would line up if he came in, but Anne certainly knows what he's doing and, you know, what he's working with, to be honest with you, getting the likes of Thomas Henry in. A 26 year old has chosen Celtic over multiple English clubs as well as Rangers. Not that they've, a bit, you know, able to afford them. Um, anyway, and would cost Celtic around seven million. A big transfer fee for a big player. The quicker he's in, the better because you know you also get like a Furuhashi, who's a different kind of strike. He's not the, the you know the normal kind of strike, number nine. Um, but he's, he gives you that option for Ashi. He just moves the for defence. They don't even have a clue where he is. He just goes boom. You know he's there and. You seen it the weekend there, he's br absolutely brilliant. And um I, f I mean hopefully we I mean hopefully we get this done. I mean two six. I think we can get it done because he looks a decent strike, you know, obviously. Um he looks like he's ready for Celtic and um um Thomas Henley admitted last night uh, last month, sorry, he finds a new adventure before being revealed as a Celtic target this week and even his boss at the Belgian club is trying to make peace with the idea that number 9 could be about to leave and Paul Scoglu is interested in, in a move for the 26 year old who has a clinical scoring record in the Pro League that's something we need because Edward, you know his mindset you know he can he can put finishes in and he can score top class goals hat tricks any day of the week like for Ashley did at the weekend but his mindset now is leaving the club he's he, he doesn't want to be at the club anymore and you, know, you can tell that by you know his attitude sometimes and you know, he's, I know he scored a penalty weekend, but it wasn't really... Some of his play was good, but at the end of the day, he's, he's going to leave the club for... I think the fees are £19 million. I'm not too sure yet. But, you know, PSG are going to get £9 million out, so you get £10 million. So it looks like a good kind of deal for Celtic, because then obviously you get, obviously, Thomas Henry in for £7 million, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, but other sides across the continent are interested, but Celtic will hope to steal a march on them, especially if Austin Edwards, as I said, is set to leave the club. And anyway, is set... Uh, ready for another step up. He said, I didn't expect to score 21 goals last season, no one expected me to score that amount, but we had a great season where we beat the likes of Anderlecht, uh, Club Luge and Standard Edge. I was top scoring in the second division, I had a lot of doubters because they said it was a lesser standard, so it was important for me to prove them wrong. Um, so yeah, um, that was really good, what he said there from Thomas Henry, he's got a story about this here. I've worked hard in recent years and I think I've really progressed as a player. I've only became a number nine since I've arrived here from disease two years ago and I think I've grown into that role, which we need because obviously if Edward's going, and Furashi's not that normal one, but he gives you know gives you goals, Furashi, I mean. And that'll be good, interesting to see how, you know, Andrew will line up, but he knows what he's doing, Andrew, if he's, you know, scouting this guy, nearly getting it done over it looks like. The club knows that and we will see the opportunities that were presented to me this summer. I don't set myself any limits or barriers. It could be England, Spain, Italy, or Germany, or Scotland. Come on. <laughs> um, fingers crossed um, we get this over line, because he looks a solid player. I'm not going to lie, he does. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, I mean hopefully, um, Thomas Henry comes to Celtic. He, he looks the part, um, he does. But... Let's get into the part of the transfer talk. Who is Thomas Henry? Celtic summer tar sum summer transfer target. Um, so the French striker might have a famous surname in his home country, but this late bloomer has crafted his own hero status in Belgium, as I'm going to say now. Um, a French striker with surname Henry. Too good to be true, surely. If Celtic's new target Tom Thomas possesses even a 
um, hundredth of the talent in his near uh, namesake displayed at Arsenal and Barcelona. Then he'll be an absolute signing. Um, in fact, regardless of his ability, the seven million rated um, OHL striker cropping up in the headlines is a good sign for fans who have long uh, ruined their club's um, penchant for letting big names swan off without, you know, even replacements or, you know what I mean. Perhaps that's the reason it's taken all summer to facilitate an exit for Edward, the man for whom uh, Henry would, Henri, you know, French, you know, Henri, um, would undoubtedly be a direct replacement, no doubt about that. He's a top scorer, 21 goals, 3-3 three three this so far this season. I don't see why not. We can get him in. Big, it looks like a good replacement for Edward. Uh, Ange Postcoglu admits he's likely to leave um, Edward. He's saying about Edward. He's likely to leave part in the coming weeks with Brighton in the driving seat for his signature. Um, but all English Premier League clubs are on the tails of him trying to get the signature. But who is Hit Honoré? Um, I'm just going to say that first for Honoré. Thomas Honoré. Um, and what he could offer the hoops if Don Mackay and company get this deal really. And that's the thing, you know, get the finger out and actually get this deal done. Let's go to the profile first. So he's stand six foot four. He's an entirely different kind of threat to obviously Kyle Farash, who lit up Glasgow's he signed with an outstanding hat trick against Dundee at the weekend. That proved to fans there's a life after Ed- Edward after what's not a book in it, a life after Edward. <laughs> Managers often like to speak about having different options up top and only uh, certainly it provides that uh, nine inches taller than the ja- Japan import, but you, you know he, he could be taller. But my Christ, um, um, what you call it? Odd, uh, no, sorry, but, uh, Furuhashi was sensational on Sunday. Absolute sensational. He's something I like Boomer too. So, but you know he's a touch of Jamie Vard. There's a touch of Jamie Vardy about his career path. He's bounced around fourth and third tier French clubs. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce them because I'm not going to mess them up. They're very hard to say. With a brief but an impressive stint at Nantes in between. Uh, there followed a switch across the border to Belgium at to be where he netted 11 and 16 appearances in the second tier. He wouldn't stay at that level for long as Henri spotted, uh, was spotted by then uh, Leuven boss Nigel Pearson. His former club have crumbled without him, but Henri has thrived, firing OHL to promotion in the Pro League and netting 45 times in 78 games. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So what kind of player is he? Headers, 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 plus a, a whole lot more. For such a tall and strong striker, Henri has a, an exci- a, a, um, excellent movement. He's great in the air, but so many of his goals are free headers, and his movement is so too much for a... a, a, a um, Opposing defenders to deal with. That's what we like to see. Too much to deal with, and he gets the goals in. He likes to pull away at the back post and battle with a full back who can't deal with physicality and displays a lovely touch to boot. Uh, expect plenty of penalties too. A butter, uh, butterly uh, smooth uh, starter step fools goalkeepers time and time again. And if he replaces Celtic's regular take a red ward, then that box is ticked. It's a complete poacher. Every time flight, um, top flight goal. He scored so far as came from inside the penalty area and many from the six yards or less. One of Celtic's main uh, defences is set pieces, you know, um, horrible at it, especially last season, trying to defend from set pieces, both defending and attacking. Um, Henri provides a massive threat in the opposition box while he can help out in front of Joe Hart uh, up in the other end. But can he really replace Edward? That's the big question, to be honest. It's that one oranges comparison. Uh, there are two different types of strikers, but let's take a look at raw data from last season. Will Henri wave his way between defenders like his Premier League bound uh, compatriot? Unlikely. Um, he does actually have a similar dribbling success rate, but attempts fewer per match when weighed up against Edward. Um, but um, as I said, there there hasn't been an aerial threat up front for Celtic like this lad in years. So if we can get this done, I'll be. Um, Jan Renger of Hesselink, Chris Sutton and John Hartson came to mind, but in recent times it has been missing. Henri wins for 45% of his aerial challenges compared to a 27% figure from Edward. Wow, that's a big one. And he's more clinical in front of goal two. Henri's 43% chance conversion rate trumps Edward's 26% and outperforms his expected goals. The main area, uh, the park end, number 22, comes out on top is bringing our players into play with more assists, chance to create and better passing acts per game. Post Goggle will need to weigh up if our players can make 
that a deficit uh, if only provides a dimension a uh, dimension of attacking threat um that has been missing from Glasgow's uh, east end for quite some time especially last season Edward we were just oh, atrocious last season and if we can get this done Henri Thomas Henri six foot four whatever he is I can't wait to see him play even potentially way Furuhashi maybe do up front but I think six three four for three so you know see how, it'll be interesting to see if he plays Henri one time for Furuhashi but you know we could switch you know we could switch or maybe for a shot wing or something like that but I'd love to see Celtic sign us by uh, this Thomas Henri from Belgium he is French so hopefully we can get it done when Edward's deal is done so maybe that's what Celtic are waiting on hopefully fingers crossed guys please subscribe and like share the video as per usual and I'll see you guys tomorrow for a podcast on the channel